Hi guys, the objective of this video is to talk about the transportation of sediment. We know how sediment is formed as we have looked at that in the previous two videos through weathering and erosion. Now that we have formed our sediment, it must be transported to the location where it will be deposited. But how will this transportation take place? Sediment can be transported through the action of gravity, wind, ice and water. And when it travels through water, it can be dissolved, suspended within the water, or it can be a bed load. Firstly, we will talk about sediment which is carried by wind. The size of sediment which can be carried by wind must be the same size as sand or smaller. When wind does transport particles, it is known to create the formations of sand dunes and ripples. Wind can also blow sediment out over the ocean, and this sediment will settle on the ocean floor. Ice can also be used as a medium for the transportation of sediment. Glaciers, which are rivers of ice, pick up sediment as they flow down mountains. These glaciers can pick up any size sediment from small silt to large boulders. Glaciers erode mountains and transport the rock that they have eroded away to the bottom of the mountain. Sediment can also be carried in water. The sediment can be carried in a few different ways. It can either be dissolved in the water as a solution or it can be suspended in the water and carried by the current. It can also be carried along the bottom of the riverbed in an action called saltation where it bounces along. This is called the bed load. The size of the particle and the energy of the water decides what type of sediment can be carried. Small sediment can be suspended quite easily in fast flowing water, whilst large pebbles will not move at all in slow flowing streams. So the size of the sediment and the energy of the water or how quickly the water is flowing decides the depositional environment. Here are a few different types of depositional environments. Fast moving rivers will carry pebbles, sand, mud and silt sized particles but slower moving rivers will only be able to carry sand, mud and silt and the pebbles will be deposited in these regions. Lakes, which are quite slow flowing if they're flowing at all, will be able to carry sand and mud but often this sand and mud will be deposited within the lake. Oceans have varying levels of energy. The current reduces as you move out to sea. Sand is first deposited as it is the largest sediment. As you move out to sea, the energy of the flowing water will reduce and the size of the sediment that the water will be able to carry will have to reduce as well. So, as you move out to sea, the size of sediment that is deposited slowly decreases. In this image here we can see there is a decrease of energy in the environment and a decreasing size of sediment as you move away from the shore. Up here we have the weathering and erosion of the rock and this creates our sediment. This sediment then flows down the river and pebbles are deposited where the river begins to flow too slowly to carry them along. Then we move towards the beach. Here our sand is deposited as the energy of the water slowly decreases. Then as we move further out to sea, mud, silt and clay sized particles are deposited as you move further out to sea. Then, at the continental shelf, we experience something called turbidity currents. These turbidity currents occur when we have sediment which avalanches over the edge of the continental shelf and then form graded beds as they reach the ocean basin. As I said, turbidity currents occur when sediment avalanches over the edge of a continental shelf and then comes to rest in the ocean basin. This occurs because of the action of gravity and this is how gravity transports sediment. Turbidity currents create graded beds called turbidites and these graded beds are characterized by having larger settlement at the bottom which settled first out of the current and then the smaller settlement on top which settles last out of the current as it, is, as it remains suspended in the water for a much longer time. This is the end of our video on the transportation of sediment. Now we should be able to understand the transportation of sediment through wind, ice, water and the action of gravity on the sediment. 